Welcome back to the Broncast, a podcast all about the Ford Bronco. I'm your host, John Melton. And I'm Donnie Whiteman. We are two Bronco enthusiasts who own Broncos, work on Broncos, and love talking about Broncos from Generation 1 all the way through Generation 6. Our sponsor for this episode is Tom's Off-Road. Tom's Off-Road has every part that you need to fully restore a Ford Bronco. In this episode, we're going to be talking about all Gen 6 stuff. We're going to drive three different Gen 6 Broncos, which is really exciting. We have close to a base model. We'll be driving a Big Bend and then my Bronco, the two-door. And then for a real treat, we actually got a Bronco Raptor to drive. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then uh, while we're at it, let's also talk about, you know, Bronco mods that you can do, purchase, and there's so many new products out there. We just kind of pick our favorites, and uh, I even pulled someone as a surprise for you. Hey, nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we're we're here back in the studio, um, episode two of the year. Um, so we're doing, you know, like we talked about last episode, podcast is a little bit different. So instead of four episode episode a week, we're doing it every other week and then releasing videos on YouTube. Um, but we didn't really get to talk about last week, New Year's resolutions. Do you have any uh, New Year's resolutions going They're into this year? They're usually the ones I, I just carry them forward every year. <laughs> but no, this year's a little different. I am, uh, you know, I'm going to get to SEMA yeah. with a truck. Yep. I mean, anyone can buy an airplane ticket, right. but I'm going to get uh, my own spin on a Bronco, full custom Bronco. So uh, I need to survive that, maybe not pull too many all-nighters, but that's my goal. And my resolution is I'm going to get a Bronco to SEMA. And I don't know where it's going to be, whose booth or what, but um, lots of sponsors, crazy build. I think it's going to make a big bang. Yeah. Nice. Nice. How about you? Um, yeah, I've got some resolutions, uh, new year's resolution, uh, one, uh, make more money <laughs> selling my body. Um, your you Bronco know. body. No, my, bo- That's how my I body, make money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, I, I want to, you know, I think I just need to start referring to all wheels and tires as dubs. <laughs> dubs. Um, yeah, like, you know, it's just one of those, you know, just dubs, like, look at those dubs, you know, like it's just 20 inches is not a dub anymore. It's you, you just all wheels and tires. Um, I, I need to start my other business bro and co. <laughs> <laughs> Which spells Bronco. Bronco. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, brothers and company, um, I'd you wear know, that shirt. That, the other business bro and co. Um, maybe Mitch Creel will be, be in that with, with me. Um, and then I need to convince the Bronco community that you're a Bronco guy. Um, oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's on my, that's on my, my new year's resolutions list. So, uh, so yeah, I have everything that's... but a tattoo. <laughs> I got the scars. Oh. I've dropped stuff on my feet, <laughs> like Dana's specifically. So yep. I have new steel toed boots. So yeah, I got everything but the uh, tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, this episode, like Donnie said, is going to be pretty fun. We're going to do some driving comparisons and then do some mods, talking about mods on the new Bronco. So uh, since New Year's, what have you been doing? I have a shoot in California with um, Ian Johnson, one of my, one of my clients, um, but then trying to get time on my current Bronco build and finally found uh, my instrument cluster, which... <laughs> Where was it? I didn't have I, it. Yeah. I kept coming in here like, okay, did I put it in here? And it it's just gotten on that lost. Truck if I had it. <laughs> yeah. So literally it was in my garage under like four boxes, which is hilarious because I literally, when I had it, I was like, don't set anything on this. That's the safest place <laughs> you could find. <laughs> because it's like a glass instrument cluster, you know, with like, it's not a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. But I finally found it. So uh, been trying to work on, on, uh, the dash and, and get some stuff going on that. Um, I 
picked up or you helped me pick up a new engine. Yep. Um, and so digging into that, um, I've kind of had some duds with engines and, uh, so we'll see if this one is any better. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, um, doing a sway bar, putting the sway bar on my green Bronco, which then oh, you get to, be nice. yeah. you get to drive because it was pretty sketchy when you drove it the first time. So yeah. So and well, it broke. Yeah. You know, what do you, <laughs> luckily what, it broke on you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What have you been oh, up to? We in chassis heaven here. It's amazing. We've got two chassis that we have completely restored and then powder coated the hammer tone gray. Super cool. But the best part is working with clean parts and running new fuel lines and, and new brake lines and like installing new four wheel disc brakes and just all the parts are new and clean. It's we cleaned the shop and now we're assembling these two chassis and hopefully in a week because we're pretty far along. We have axles under them, suspension, brakes. Um, we're going to be setting the two bodies on these two new chassis and. Um, it's just, that's the fun part. It's like building a car model. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, is this one of the bodies? Yeah. The oh, white one. And, uh, so you painted everything first and then you're going to set the body on. Yeah. Um, I didn't paint it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't paint. Yeah. So had um, someone paint it. Yeah. Graffiti. Yeah. Counts, but <laughs> yeah. So we've got the dashboards painted, tailgates painted, doors, hood everything's painted, but off the truck. So wow. yeah, we're going to set the tub on and then, um, you know, start in the engine bay. We'll set the engine down in there, uh, start doing the radiator and a cooling system and yeah, it's just all coming together. It's wow. super exciting. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. You're way ahead of me on, on my, on my build, but maybe I'll catch up. Yeah. We'll get all three <laughs> going at the same, at the same point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. This episode, uh, yeah, like Donnie said, we're doing some driving comparisons, and then we're going to talk about mods on the new Bronco. We're not in the studio, obviously. We've changed locations. It sounds different. It looks different. We're in Donnie's Bronco, and uh, part of you know what we're doing this year is driving Broncos, getting a feel for Broncos, talking about how they drive, how they perform, not really perform because we're not, we're not taking them fast, but so we're just going to start in Donnie's, and then we got a couple more today. Yeah, so we actually have three Broncos for you. So uh, we have uh, sort of a base model, six-speed, it's really a seven-speed manual transmission Bronco. We have the uh, two-door mm -hmm. Sasquatch package. And then we have a special treat for you. Yeah. We have a Braptor. So we're going to drive all three today. All right. Starting off, Donnie's Bronco, which I've driven before. You need to put your seatbelt on. Oh. Huh? Donnie's obviously driven his Bronco before. Without my seatbelt. Yeah. Dangerous. So, uh... We're gonna, we're just gonna take it. All right, so we're gonna go through some bumps here and we're gonna, it's gonna be all wobbly. So some of the things we wanna talk about, like it's engine, transmission, um, handling. Yeah. And uh, just things that if you were buying a new Bronco, you would wanna know what is the difference in these three different extremes of uh, Bronco. So the first thing that you kind of notice right off the bat with Donnie's Bronco. One, it's a two-door, so uh, it's definitely a lot smaller. Josh, our producer, is in the back, um, and he's a large man, and uh, so he doesn't have a whole lot of room back there. Um, but also, Donnie's Bronco is on 37s, and so, like, you, even though it's a two-door, you're still really high up. You can feel the knobs on the tires you know it it definitely like it, it feels like you're in you know much higher than your normal everyday bronco but what i love about your suspension is it doesn't feel any different than a stock suspension like it feels just like a stock suspension would um on an on a stock bronco and i think that's pretty amazing what 
suspension is this? So this is the Icon Stage 7 suspension. And what I like about it is I drove it around with the 35s and the stock suspension. I switched it over expecting it to be very different. And instead, it's nice if not more plush. Yeah, it really is. I mean, just every day cruising down the, you know, cruising down the road, like, it does not feel like it's lifted. It doesn't feel like... Uh, you know, like when you lift a vehicle, like it changes the geometry of the vehicle. I can drive this with my hands off the wheel and, you know, it goes straight down the road. Maybe it curves a little bit since you jumped it. But... <laughs> to the, maybe to the right. <laughs> but still, like it's pretty amazing to have 37s, you know, um, and such a beefy suspension because it's new control arms, new shocks, new, you know, new springs. Uh, the whole the whole thing so yeah everything is longer to accommodate accommodate for the lift yeah but um, yeah it, right I'm pleasantly surprised rides great in any of the new coilover suspension kits um, if if everything is done right you're not taking away from you know the handling of the truck and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Dana has an IFS in the front so as you lift it you're not changing the geometry and your, your toe and, and everything else and your camber, this all pretty much still maintains all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing, you know, that the Bronco has is the auto start-stop feature, which if you want to change that, you can. But I actually, I mean, it's kind of nice because now we're at a stoplight and it's all quiet. Uh, and we're able to talk, you know, quietly, and then you start going again. But whatever, uh, whatever you save on fuel, you'll spend on a new starter one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, exactly. that's how I figure it. Exactly. But yeah, so 37 inch tires. Um, Donnie has the hard top on here, which the tire noise does come through. We'll, we'll pop up on the freeway here and really hear the, the noise difference, but the tire noise does come through like and I think that's partially because of your tire cho the tire choice like you got the Mickey yeah. Thompson's on there and so it's an aggressive tire so if you're going to go with a bigger tire just keep in mind the, the noise comes through on either the hard top or the soft top if you have an aggressive tire well I, I like the tire noise I mean, I'm going to let these tires chop until they're really loud. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like a pair of old groundhogs from the 70s. I want to want you to hear me coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about like, okay, we're just going through the street. You know, you've already felt the ride. The ride's nice. Um, have you noticed anything about the steering or the handling yet? Yeah. Like when you think about handling with a Bronco... Um, it's definitely something that is not as smooth as, you know, a BMW SUV or uh, a, a Land, Land Rover SUV or something like that. Like the steering and the handling is a little bit more clunky um, because I, it's made to be like that. So it's better off road. You can... You know, it's more capable than those other vehicles. Like, I still think it's great, way better than my Bronco. Um, but it, there's still an element of, uh, you know, it is stiff. Now, comparatively to like a Jeep, um, the, the handling is so much better than a Jeep um, because it has that IFS like you were talking about. When you drive it, I mean, what are your, like, how do you feel like it handles? This is your car. Well, I'm, I've been driving a couple of Jeeps lately, so did a little bit of work on two Jeeps. One's a 2005, uh, the ultimate, the longer bed, and the other one is a 2012 Call of Duty edition Jeep on 37s, and it's kind of fun to jump in and out of that and this and compare the difference, but just getting in and out of the truck, this is so much more user-friendly. The Jeeps have the tub, you kind of have to step over and, um, but yeah, this is just a, has such nice manners, you know, and yeah. you know, you can get in and out of it, you park, you park it in a parking lot. You, um, easy to get in and out of parking spots. That's what yeah. I meant to say. 
Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Okay, so one of the things that Donnie has is this thing called the Pedal Commander. <laughs> um, and it, you know, increases your speed. Like, uh, it changes the throttle response. It changes the shift points um, because all that stuff is electronic. So here we are, we're getting on the freeway and I'm just gonna floor it. Oh my gosh! I about lost my glasses. <laughs> that it's, was actually incredible. It's a turbo! <laughs> There's 70. Alright, I won't go much over 70. That was amazing! I actually did not expect <laughs> that much of a... Uh, kick in the pants. <laughs> kick in the pants. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you heard the exhaust. Donnie's got the... Bold performance. Bold performance exhaast. Just, just <laughs> the muffler, excellent. Yeah, just the muffler. It was actually, that was pretty good. Like, yeah. I've never floored it in this Bronco. And, uh, so that was fun with 37s it. and everything. With 37s, yeah. I'm totally impressed with the amount of power the 2.7 turbo has. Yeah, yeah. Now you can hear there's more noise, more tire noise. There's wind noise coming from the hard top. That's, that's a part of life. Like, it's... You know, if you're gonna own the Bronco, that is a part whether you have the soft top or the hard top. Right? Well, but the, the reason the hard top is still has noise is because it's uh, different pieces. It's it's basically modular, and you take the pieces off, so there's all these joints, and uh, it's not leaked. I've been super happy with it. Yeah, um, it's way quieter than uh, the vinyl top, but at the same time, I would buy i'm hoping to get a four-door next and i'm gonna get the hard top for sure yeah yeah that was fun <laughs> do you do you floor it much all the time <laughs> especially with someone that's not ready for it. Yeah. once the tires get loped yeah it literally just like throws you well there was yeah there was a hesitation like i floored it and nothing really happened and i was like did I really floor that? And then it kicked in and it <laughs> surprised me. Well, there's there's turbo lag and then there's 37-inch yeah. tire lag. And then yes. when you get them both at the same time, it kind of leaps on you. Yes, which it is, totally did. Uh, so just so everybody knows, this is the 2.7 liter turbo. So, and it's got a substantial size turbo on it. Um, but yeah, it, the, there's turbo lag, but when it kicks in, it's, it's a real surprise and yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But I have, I, even towing, like I tow with this. I've towed your Bronco with yep. this. I towed Heath's Bronco on it and uh, it tows fine, kind of surprising. Yeah. I, I don't lack for power. No, not at all. Yeah, so this is the wild track. Um, so you've got, you know, front locking differential, rear locking differential, sway bar disconnect. Uh, or I'm sorry, trail turn assist, but no sway bar disconnect. Right. Um, it's the only thing you, you can't get with this one. Yeah. Different from the Badlands. Yeah. Uh, you have the, like you said, the up bitter switches are yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, just it, starting to wire things into those. This is the smaller screen, so it's not the Lux package. Uh, but the screen's still plenty big, and you know, it's, it's still a, it, you know, I for the. I like the Wild Track. I think it's a good, uh, a good trim model, and I think it, you know, it's not as expensive as the Badlands, uh, but still really good. I think it looks good. Uh, I like it. It looks really cool with the top off, and yeah, uh, I timed Kim and I taking the doors off and the top off, and I, I think we're at like eight minutes, and That's you amazing. know, because you're trying to be careful with the doors. Yeah. Um, but. Um, most of the time was spent unscrewing the rear roof. So yeah. there are uh, companies out there that make um, quick quick bolts that you do them with your fingers. And, um, you know, uh, those are the way to go. Rockworks is a company that sent oh, me yeah. theirs. And yeah. now it cut the time and took four minutes off the time wow. to take the, the rear cap off. Yeah. But all the time, I just take these two like T-tops off, but it's clear all the way across, so it becomes like a, a target top. It's all yeah. open. Yeah. So, and and I've said if, if I could get one accessory, the next one's going to be the the soft rider top, where you just flip it back and uh, flip it forward. You can do that at a stoplight. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll talk about mods coming up next, but uh, before we do that, we need to drive a couple more Broncos.
All right, so now we are in a big bend, manual transmission. Um, four door. Four door, not two door. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about, oh. It's a <laughs> manual, you it's a manual. The clutch in. we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the differences I'll put here. put my seatbelt on first yeah. now. Yeah, good. Cause you're driving a stick. I will say, it's been a while since I've driven a stick. My bit, my uh, I had a Mitsubishi Eclipse back in ninety no two thousand and two. That was a stick. So well, it's look been at a while. you hit first gear on the there first try. All right, didn't stall it. A little a little rough. So I don't I didn't need second gear there, but you know, it's still fun. I do want to see. Okay, before we we're in a gravel uh, gravel part of a road here. So how do you get into the crawl gear? Okay, so you pull up on that collar like you're gonna go into reverse, but you put it in the C. So it's a, it looks like it's a six speed, but they've added crawl gear. Whoa. So just let it out and don't touch the gas. Yeah, I'm not touching the gas and just letting the clutch you out. just let and it all the way out. I mean, it just and it drives engages. It, it drives itself. That is amazing. That's pretty cool. I wanted to, yeah, I've never tried that feature. That's a cool feature for sure, like. We're going three miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Three miles an hour. I mean, it's super easy. Yeah. Okay. And then first gear kicks back in and, uh, and you're off. So yeah, so very different. Um, obviously the difference between Donnie's Bronco, this does not have 37 inch tires. This has about 31s, 31 inch street tires. I mean, yeah. just your radial. Um, but I've actually heard people don't like the manual transmission and I haven't driven one in a Bronco yet, so I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but I heard from a couple different people that they really didn't enjoy having a manual transmission with the Bronco, like didn't like how it responded or handled or whatever it is. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, I've never driven it, never driven the, manual before on the on the old bronco so we'll, we'll yeah, see yeah so it says it's a seven speed but in reality the crawl gear you got c and then one through six yeah i will say first gear is real short like Fif like 15 miles an hour you got to be out yeah i mean <laughs> you're barely going and you're you're already shifting and i shifted into fourth at 35 but i really like the way the Broncos ride, even even though this is, uh, I guess there's the base model and then there's Big Bend and uh, it still just rides as nice as Ugh. any of the Broncos. Yeah. Oh, let the clutch out a little early there. <laughs> yeah. still, uh, <laughs> still getting the feel for it. <clears throat> Hello, officer. We're, I was uh, really hoping you were going to stall it not so I could give you a hard time. <laughs> I've driven enough manuals that I don't, I don't stall them. I have stalled a Corvette uh, when we were filming something, and I was like, ugh, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, control-wise, if you like a manual transmission, I would assume that you're going to like this, but, um, I mean, I'm fine with the manual. Like, there's nothing that jumps out at me that's like, oh, this is just terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's a manual transmission, like, you know. In reality, you're really driving a six-speed because they give you the crawl gear. So that's pretty much what a lot of cars have today in manual transmissions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one, there aren't many cars that just come standard with a manual transmission. It's like a special feature kind of thing. Yeah, this one was actually pretty hard to get. Yeah. So I, I've been looking for about three weeks before I could find one that they would let us drive. Yeah, yeah. It might have had something to do with us. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And this is, again, it's one of the lower models. So even, you know, there's no switches up here on the dash other than your traction control and your hazards. So there's no front locking differential, no rear locker, um, no trail turn assist. So that's a bummer. Um, it feels a lot different with the radial tires, like just being honest between, you know, like the knobbiness of your tires, like you feel that when you're driving. Um, but I, I like that, like I like yeah. having, you know, the, the knobby tires, 
like this feels more like a car and like i said uh when we were driving here is like the handling it's not going to feel like a, a land rover or something like that this with radial tires it, i mean it kind of does like it doesn't feel quite as clunky with the with the big tires it's very and, civilized and smooth yeah like super it's smooth. it's really smooth even with the manual transmission i'm actually liking this manual transmission the more i drive it i like yeah i think it drives really nice i don't know after driving this i don't know why anybody would really have any complaints about the manual transmission i don't either um because it it shifts really nice so. yeah I, I guess my one complaint would be first gear. Like that's it's a pretty pretty short first gear, but yeah. Other than that, it's not too bad. Oh, ho! Oh. Almost, oh, almost, almost it. stalled it. <laughs> Don't I knew it. The rust comes out. <laughs> I wasn't I like I wasn't paying attention. The light changed. I was trying to be quick. <laughs> I was holding the parking brake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where it I'll is. Be, it's either. electric. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I would have done that too. <laughs> That's a good idea. Hold the parking brake. That's all high school trick. So handling handles pretty. Handles good. Pretty nice. Yeah. Do we know? Is this two point three or two? This is the two point three. Okay. So we get to drive all oh, three nice. engines today. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, when you drove it, what were your thoughts like? Just impressed with how smooth it shifted. Um, it rides so much nicer because it's so much longer than the two door. So yeah. if someone were to be considering buying a new Bronco and they had any SUV, I would not recommend the two door because yeah. they're going from a longer four door. They need to go into a, a four door Bronco and they won't be disappointed. They'll, yeah. they'll be surprised, especially if they if they drive this and then go drive a Jeep. Right. It's this is much more like uh, a nice smooth ride that they're accustomed to. Yeah. How about noise? We're in the convertible top. Yeah. The tires are quiet. <clears throat> the tires are a lot quieter. Um, yeah, I mean, noise doesn't seem bad. We're about to get on the freeway here, and that might be uh, <clears throat> telling of uh, how it is. But yeah, I mean, nothing, it doesn't seem too noisy all right well so we're on the on-ramp so tell us what you think of the 2.3 right, liter here we go 2.3 turbo it's gonna go from second <laughs> definitely not nearly the the kick in the pants that yours had oh my gosh I about I lost actually, my glasses. <laughs> that was actually incredible yeah. like years like it was a kick in the pants just <laughs> taking off and you're shifting so it's a little bit different still have that turbo lag um and uh yeah but i i could tell a difference between the two i mean could you like yeah this to me feels like um not a performance engine but yeah. more like uh you know, Forerunner, they usually offer two different engines. This would feel like the smaller of the two engines, but I I don't feel it's underpowered, but I wouldn't pull a trailer with it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, it's yeah. less power. It is much less power, um, which is interesting because I've heard people compare the two and they're like, oh, it's the same. Like, it feels the same. That did not feel close to what yours had yeah so you know. the 2.7 liter um is this basically a, the same engine power plant that they put into the raptor but the raptor's all cranked up so i felt like i could kind of abuse my engine because it's uh maxed out i wouldn't say maxed out but they really throw a lot more horsepower at it yeah bigger turbo and they're making a hundred and some more horsepower yep so for me um, I feel like I, I can push that thing pretty hard. Yeah. The 2.7. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, that definitely felt less, um, than, uh, than yours. And, um, and then rowing through the gears didn't feel as efficient either than, you have the 10 speed automatic transmission or seven, seven speed. 
yeah, there, uh, there's an eight speed automatic, which is what you would get in the 2.3 liter and there's the 10 speed. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this is a great option. If you're like, I would love a Bronco. I'm not going to do a whole lot to it. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I'm not going to take it off road. So I don't need the lockers. Like I just, but I don't want the base model that just comes with the steel wheels. And, mm. you know, like, I think this is a nice up, uh, you know, step up from the base model of the, the Bronco, but not anything crazy, you know, like, um, and the manual is actually fun to drive. Like, yeah, I, I, I do enjoy it. I, yeah, I, I like the manual. So, and the crawl gears, the crawl gear is really cool. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the in the price range on this truck, you know, these are around $48,000. And you do get alloy wheels, maybe a little bigger tire, 31-inch. Um, radials, again, they're street tires. But I feel like this is in line with anything else you'd buy for $48,000. I don't yeah. believe you're, you're getting shorted in any area. Right, right. Yeah, I, I agree. And I actually do like these seats just a little bit better. What what are these? The, these are the cloth seats. I like the cloth seats. They're yeah. nice. I don't know how long they would last, but I don't think they're... Like, it doesn't feel like a cheap option, you know? Yeah. It's not velour. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sheepskin. What was that one 78 Bronco that they had in sheep wood? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Like, what is that? Sheepwood. Yeah, but the four-door does feel bigger. Like, it feels bigger just sitting in the past, in the driver's seat with, you know, what's behind you. Like, mm -hmm. it, it definitely has more room. Feels like it's more roomy. Um, and uh, for, you know, I'm six foot. So, for me, that's a nice... Well, they're considerably wider. Are you they know? really? Yeah. Than the two-door? No, oh. than the Jeeps. Oh, yes. And like, yes. the, I just, from a daily driver and being comfortable and having passengers, you know, I was driving the 2005 Jeep this morning and you can't roll the window up and down without like having your elbow right into your <laughs> rib cage. And when you're steering, uh, someone's added a little like one and a half inch armrest to the door and when you turn your elbow catches on that oh. so they're just so narrow yeah and i really like the width of the bronco well over even the jeep the two of us grown men sitting here our elbows don't touch when we both have our arm on the the center console like you know that's like it's just weird when it's like oh yeah. uh oh is that it oh boy I just Push the clutch it. in. <laughs> I stalled it. Well, he's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, my fault. Rookie, uh, rookie manual driver. The funny thing was the guy next to me didn't go. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, that guy stopped. We must still uh, just be stopped at this stop point." <laughs> I should have put the student driver sign on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does take a little bit to get used to. Like, yeah, I haven't driven a manual for years, so it's definitely a, a shift in your mind that you have to do. So you were talking about the width of the truck and how we're, our our elbows are, you know, a solid four inches apart. Yeah. This is good because you don't want your weenuses to touch. Yeah, that's so weird. That's just that'd weird. That'd be weird. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I feel like this, the, the, the four-door definitely has a lot more room and the Bronco just in general has more room than a Jeep. Um, and even, I think when we were doing our comparisons, even more than the forerunner, um, and not by much, but like two inches, but still two inches around you ends up feeling like a lot. So yeah, yeah it's very roomy and, uh, and yeah, the big bend is, a great trim option to go for when you don't want all the bells and whistles and you're not going to be going off road and you're not going to be, you know, you just want a daily driver. That's a Bronco. And 
You don't need a, all the all the uh, extra stuff with it. And there's room. You could put uh, bigger tires on this that would actually lift the truck another inch and give it a much more off-road aggressive look yeah. just by changing tires alone yeah. as an upgrade. Well, and I will say the big thing when you're upgrading these vehicles, there is a difference in the suspension. Like if you're gonna go with a stock suspension, like the base and the big bend have, I think it's the Haas 1.0 or Haas 2.0 uh, suspension, whereas the Badlands I think is a 3.0 or the names are probably wrong, but I just know that there is a difference in the beefiness of the suspension. Uh, between the different trim models but yeah you're right like throw some big tires on this and you know it's gonna look great and yep yeah i wouldn't put 37s but i'd put 35 i think it this. i think if you want to go from these 31 inch tires to the 35 inch tires that someone might be taking off their uh yeah bigger bronco you um you do need to do a puck lift yeah something that just like a one inch puck lift just to clear um other components in the truck So our last comparison, Donnie, you get to drive this one, uh, is the Raptor. The yeah, Bronco this is Raptor. This is it. We went from the bottom all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah, why did I get to drive? I drove the bottom. You get to drive the top. I was worried about your shifting. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is an automatic. So yeah, it anybody have can drive an automatic, right? Yeah. So yeah, the Bronco Raptor. So I've actually never driven one of these. Um, this is my first time being in one. So it's pretty pretty much the same as a Bronco. <laughs> yeah. So the cool thing about the Bronco Raptor is is there's a limited production of them, but it has it's just so much wider on the outside. Yeah. With the big flares and actually it has F one fifty axles under it from the Raptor. So there I measured. They're actually this is six inches wider at the wheels. Oh, the axles wow. than the um, big bend that we drove. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. so you're going to be running over your mailbox, yeah. <laughs> your trash cans. Running off of your driveway. <laughs> hitting curbs. Yeah. It's so much wider. Look at the size of the screen. Is that massive? That is massive. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, compared to what we just drove, it's almost double. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's impressive. That's and, pretty uh, nice. The other things I noticed on the inside of this that's that's super cool. I mean, you've got everything. You've got all the upfitter switches. You have um, leather. I've got a really fat, like almost racing steering wheel. It's got leather and carbon fiber. Paddle shift. Paddle shifters. That's How crazy. cool is that? I'm afraid to use those. Yep. Um, Extra buttons here on the steering wheel. There are so many buttons on yeah. the steering wheel. Um, I'm going to assume that's a heated steering, heated wheel. steering wheel. I don't know what the R stands Raptor for. Raptor version. We'll have to um, put it in yeah. Raptor, Raptor mode. Raptor mode. Yeah. Um, there's a shock, and here's an exhaust tip, so it must have the valve in the shock oh, and the exhaust yeah. so that you can go straight through here. Let's just uh, rev it up. That's without the button. Okay. Push the button. Exhaust. Normal. Sport mode exhaust. Oh, there's Baja exhaust. Baja. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> Off-road use, use only. <laughs> We're not going to take your truck Baja. We're just going to leave it Baja mode, though. <laughs> All right, well, let's go for a spin. All right. We'll take the same route that we did with all the other vehicles. And, uh... <clears throat> yeah, so trim-wise, when you're comparing, you know, You've got the Broncos, you got the different trim levels, and then this is a big jump up. You know, like this isn't just a trim level change. This is a whole new version. Um, and it's a considerable amount more. You know, the Badlands is 60,000, this is 90 plus thousand. Um, and, and they're so, still they're still selling for 10% over dealer. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're hard to get. Um, hard to come by and uh, yeah it's definitely definitely a unique <clears throat> a unique version of the Bronco you want your heated seat on yeah my 
I'm on fire. Uh, you want to turn it off? Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it feels very different. You know, there's a lot more, a lot different textures in here. So it doesn't really compare just apples to apples to the Big Ben that we drove or even your wild track. Um, it, there's a lot of differences. Yeah, just the, uh, why well, you can really hear the exhaust. You can really hear it. The, the hard top on this is quieter than mine. Yeah. I think the, they've really got the four door hard top sorted out. And uh, the throttle response is pretty awesome. I know we have a bunch of different modes we can put this in. Right. Um, you've got all your GOAT modes. Yep. All of the trucks that we drove today had all the GOAT modes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I think the difference is a Badlands has rock crawl GOAT mode, where yours and the Big Ben doesn't. Right. Yours, I think yours has sport, yep. which the Badlands does not have. Yeah, this rides super nice. Now, can you change the shock valving while you're driving? <laughs> Are you I can't. Te something? I can't even text while I drive. <laughs> but yeah, you, you want to push buttons? Go for it. <laughs> All right, we'll see what happens here. Damper normal, sport, off road. So you can change your damper. Can you change? Man, you can change the exhaust while you're driving it. Yeah, you can hear it change. That's pretty cool. Whoa. I don't know if you could hear that, you know, on on the video, on the audio, but yeah, definitely change the sound of it. So this truck is, I mean, it's not exactly what it is, but it's like a Bronco body on a Raptor. Yes. Um, like a Raptor F-150 pickup. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But with all the same, you know, we have on our hero switches, we have the sway bar disconnect, front locking differential, rear locking differential, and trail turn assist. So we have a lot of the functionality of the Bronco, but the added, you know, fun Raptor-esque type things, um, like paddle shifters, being able to change your shock sensitivity and your exhaust tone. tone. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, this ride's smoother than my truck. It's probably because really? he has a better choice of tires on this. Um, sure. But yeah, it's it's a it's amazing how smooth this thing rides. Really? Yeah. Does it feel more like <clears throat> the Big Ben? Uh, it feels just like my Sasquatch when I had the 35-inch tires on it. I was expecting this, the Bronco Raptor to be super firm, yeah, and it's not. But we can also change that in the settings. Yeah, true. I mean, inside, in here, it feels very similar to the four-door. Like if you know, if you took all the extra buttons and knobs away, it feels feels the same. Like um, you know, our seats are covered in something different, but outside of that. Like there's not a whole lot that, you know, everything's in the same relative position, but yeah, we just have all the, the extra features and extra buttons on the steering wheel and it's not a manual. I do feel really special driving this though. <laughs> I feel like Lauren Healy or Vaughn Gittin. You, you should. I feel like I'm having fun. <laughs> fun haver. <laughs> That's right. I mean, ride quality, like what would you say how does it ride compared to yours? Um, you know, it feels like it steers the same. Everything I've I've uh, I've chosen a super aggressive tire, and I think the difference in the ride is really in my truck mostly the tires. So yeah. these sidewalls feel a little softer, more like something you'd want, you know, uh, on Baja, whereas mine are more like rock rock crawling tires so yeah, for sure the sidewalls are definitely a lot firmer i prefer this ride yeah so i think what i'll try next on my truck are some different tires yeah i think he's got the bf goodrich all terrains yeah yeah so yeah definitely not an aggressive tire but it gives you some little bit of off-road look so not just a radial tire 
I'd be honest, I don't think there's anything I'd even change on this. There isn't much to upgrade yeah. on a Bronco Raptor. Yeah. Noise wise, I agree. I feel like the top is a lot quieter on this. You can't hear the tires. Um, the, the whole thing just feels a little bit quieter. The engine feel, or the exhaust feels louder. Yeah. We're about to uh, get onto the interstate and yeah, we are. see what the uh, <laughs> acceleration feels like. So the difference in engine too, mine's a 2.7 liter, this is a three liter. It's basically a, a bored out or punched up version of my engine. So um, in many ways it's the same, but you know, I my, my uh, 2.7 liter turbo has 325 horsepower and this one has 418 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, so almost 100 more horsepower. Wow. But yeah. it also has way more torque. This thing makes 440 foot-pounds of torque. Man. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, much different. You know, it is interesting. This is our third Bronco that we've driven today, and there are a lot of similarities, you know, and it makes me just like, there's not too much that is that different between the price ranges. I don't know. We'll see getting on the freeway if, uh, you know, you really feel the seat in the pants kind of feel. Maybe this is where the money is. I hope I don't want one <laughs> after we accelerate. like a gt40 did you hear that that was great <laughs> it doesn't you know what's cool is this one was so much smoother i didn't get that jerk uh -huh. from the turbo it has more power but it delivered it so much more yes. smoothly and quicker like yeah. I, I mean i wasn't driving but it felt quicker on my on this end huh you won't spill your drink no. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely didn't throw you back. Oh, but wow. But it That's still fine. was a lot of power. What, okay, you drive yours every day. Was that quicker than yours? Oh, hello, Tennessee State Trooper. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> we're only going 63. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I got on the brakes. No, actually, um, I'm not a big turbo lag guy. I prefer yeah. superchargers. So when we build the the 7.3 liter Godzilla for the SEMA build, we're gonna do a supercharger. And, uh, cause uh, mine definitely has a kick in the pants yeah. when it comes on. There's lag and then it hits really hard, which is fun, but um, not the most drivable thing. If you're playing in the mud and stuff, you kind of want to be able to have that throttle, yes. modulate the throttle. Um, this would be way better to drive around the course. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think you should drive it. I'm going to pull over. <laughs> you, you've driven the other two, so right, I'm going to let right. you take us home. Is that the exhaust is pretty it's pretty cool having it that much you just hear it that much more <laughs> it does sound like if you could figure out how to get that exhaust note that'd be pretty amazing on yours I think you have to buy the whole drivetrain yeah front to back I think so yeah the power is so smooth yeah. Yeah, it is. So the transmission feels exactly the same to me. Yeah. And I, and I love my transmission. Just Very the way it smooth. shifts. And yeah. I was really worried about that when I first got the Bronco, about having, you know, a transmission with that many speeds in it. And uh, it's nice. 
Yeah. You know, the biggest thing for me between this truck and my two door. Yeah. Is this has that new car smell. <laughs> yeah. And it's so sweet. And mine smells like a locker. <laughs> it literally, I don't know what I did, but it does not have the new car smell yeah, anymore yeah. that the other two Broncos we've driven do. Yeah, that is very true. Did you not notice that yeah. funk in my truck? Yes, it, it does have a smell. <laughs> All right, let's see this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, it sounds like we're in like a... It sounds amazing. And if you heard that, you would not expect to see a Bronco no, going down the street. No. I mean, it's definitely not as loud as like some annoying Mustangs that I've heard, but it's still like it has a nice rumble. Yeah, really, really good sound. I think I would probably burn through all my fuel just doing that every time. That puts time a I, smile on my face yeah, every yeah. time you do it. Yep. Okay, now, but here's the thing that I'm like... I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in is we've driven three Broncos. We're in now the Raptor, which is the top of the line Bronco. And is the price difference worth it? Double. Double. Like you can buy one's 50, one's a hundred basically. Yeah. And, um, and I like to me, I would almost rather buy the Big Bend and upgrade it the way that I wanted to. Maybe not the Big Bend, maybe more like yours, the Wild Track, and upgrade it the way that I wanted. Then, you know, it like, so if I had $100,000 today, would I buy this or would I buy a Wild Track and upgrade it the way that I want it? I would go for a Wild, I'd do a four door Wild Track. Yeah. Put big tires on it, put, you know, like, I, there's nothing about the Raptor that makes me like, oh man, I have to, I mean, there's cool features, but I'm like, I could probably get that exhaust note from, you know, yep. playing with different exhausts. I could probably tune, you know, the engine, the 2.7 to get not 418, but you know, more horsepower, I, man, flooring it in yours was fantastic. Like that <laughs> brought a smile to my face, you know? So it's interesting, like. I'm kind of at a dilemma of like, man, is the Raptor worth the money? Yeah. Well, you know, so you could spend fifteen or twenty thousand dollars on um, a Sasquatch or one of the other models that are a little higher up the line, and and have everything that you want. And yeah. uh, there's so many new products coming out right now for all the other Broncos. There's not much to do to a Raptor, but. Um, there's so many exhaust systems coming out, suspension systems, cool wheels and tires. Um, th that's probably a, the neatest thing right now is you can really make any of them your own. Yeah. All right, well, kind of closing this, this uh, section out. <clears throat> what we're gonna do next is let's go in and let's talk about some of the upgrades. Let's talk about what are the mods that you should be doing to your Bronco in 2024. Yeah. All right. So we're back in the studio. Um, that was, uh, those were pretty cool. It was, it was fun to drive. It was fun to see the difference, you know, throughout each Bronco, but then also be like, I like I could easily just buy the cheapest Bronco and make it, you know, drive and feel the way that I want to maybe without spending that much money, but also maybe it would cost more, you know, like I don't, I don't actually know how much money it would cost to get like that big Ben to drive like the, 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 uh, Raptor. So after you drove the manual transmission, would you, would that keep you from buying one? No, or not necessarily. Not, not, not at all. I didn't mind it at all. Like I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, I, like I wouldn't do the 2.3. Um, sorry to anyone who has a 2.3. Like that was a noticeable difference. A automatic. It would probably feel different as well. Um, uh, versus, versus the manual, but 
your 2.7, man, it had some serious pep <laughs> and I was like th- thrilled with it, you know? So yeah. 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 The kick in the pants. I I'm with you. I didn't know. I didn't have an opinion. I've heard good and bad, but I haven't driven it myself. So after driving the seven speed, which is really a six speed with yeah. a crawler gear, um, I absolutely would buy that. That was fun to drive, yeah. but I would want my engine in it, the 2.7. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, let's get into this. Uh, talking mods, must-have mods for the new Bronco 2024, because we did this in 23. So 2024, uh, what are you looking at for your first mod on on the new Bronco? Well, it, okay, so um, metal bumpers straight up, you know, uh, I'm not a plastic bumper guy and they give it more clearance and they just look cool, but they're completely functional. So, uh, you mount lights to it, you know, the people that bolt on the little cactus smasher onto their plastic bumper, (laughs) that's just going to go right through the radiator. You know, uh, you can't mount that to plastic. So I'm a bumper guy, front and rear bumpers, make a world of difference because you have clevises and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. See, I like the modular bumper on the Bronco because it is metal. Like you have the plastic one, um, but you can get the modular front yeah. bumper. And I like that one. And I like that you can pull the sides out and, uh, you know, make it kind of a stubby bumper. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think it, I, you know, I think it does well for me, I'm going lift and tires. Like I think hands down, that is the first thing that every Bronco owner should look at, uh, is lift and tires, you know, because like, I don't know, it just like for me, a four door, uh, Bronco with 37 inch tires has the perfect stance, you know? And so, um, but you got to get a little bit of a lift to get that, you know, clear those 37s. Um, and so, yeah, you could do a simple puck lift or you could go as much as you did and, and do that stage eight icon lift with stage seven, stage seven with, uh, you know, new shocks and springs and like all of the, you know, all the components, so you got a ten thousand dollar option or a five hundred dollar option, yeah. um, and it depends on what you're going to use it for. You know, I would love to if I had a new Bronco, I'd take it off road. I'd take it up to Moab, and so um, you know, I'm going to go for the ten thousand dollar option and you know, thirty seven inch tires or um, you know, bigger if I could get it. So but e- even uh, the Broncos that come with the thirty five inch white letter tires, you know, a one inch lift. Yeah. It makes it look a lot better and you do get one inch more clearance. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Mod number two. What do you got? Uh, mod number two for me is the lift kit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, I have, like you said, the stage seven icon kit, which is around $9,000. It's not cheap. It's full coil over with big reservoirs and, um, drives just as nice as a stock Bronco. So, um, there wasn't any downside to it other than it was expensive. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, that for me is, is hands down is lift kit with 37 inch tires. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm copying your Bronco. I didn't mean to do this. We but, didn't look at each other's yeah. list. <laughs> well, no, I'm copying like what's on your Bronco. My oh. second one would be the KC Highlight uh, Pro 6 LED 50-inch bar that you have on your Bronco right now because I think it looks super sweet. And you also have the lift and tires that I talked about. But um, yeah, and for all of you who are watching this on YouTube, uh, feel free to click the link in the description below where you can see any of these parts. But uh, Tom's Off-Road has the KC Highlights Gravity uh, 50-inch light bar. And it's it looks great. You know, I'm looking out the window cause I can see it right out the window. Um, but it looks really good. It's, it fits the Bronco. Well, it doesn't stick up too much. Um, and, uh, it's just a nice upgrade to have, um, not super practical, you know, like how, how <laughs> often do you need, I don't know how many lumens of light that is a billion lumens of light, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, you're not working like at a construction. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was, I was in Indianapolis at the PRI show 
and I had to park underground and I'm like, uh, I've never had a truck this high. And you and I had that competition on whose truck could be taller. <laughs> well, I'm going through and the lights are like pushing the little round tube that says, oh. don't be any taller than this. And I'm sort of like lifting it. So I had to like navigate through the parking <laughs> garage looking for high spots. And I had just told myself all day, don't forget about the light bar. So yeah. when I left, I didn't just go tearing out of there. Yeah. But uh, I made it in and out, but I'm absolutely at the limit. Yes, yes, for sure. At the limit of parking in a parking garage. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. I like that light bar. It's about $2,000. And uh, yeah, it's a good one for sure. All right, number three. My third Bronco upgrade is the exhaust system. I just got to tell you, they're so quiet right from the factory right. and they've got an auto start and you can't, you auto start it and you can hear it honk at you, which is really annoying, but um, it'll start up and I can't tell if it's running or not. Yeah. So I put the exhaust on it and now it's got a little bit of a growl. So you almost, you know, when I start it up, someone's walking down the sidewalk, they'll turn around to see if it's showing its teeth. <laughs> it's just a little growl. Yeah. It makes It makes a big difference, but it's also fun, but there's no drone. It's not obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we just drove the Raptor, and we kept it in off road or what was it? <laughs> Baja the Baja mode, exhaust. Yeah. yeah. And it was growly. It sounded great. Like that is, yeah, definitely the exhaust tone that you're going for. Um, and, and, and this is the axle back. So it's literally just the muffler with, you know, 14 inches of pipe on each end. Yeah, you yeah. can do it in your driveway. You don't even have to lift your truck to do it. And uh, they're like $700. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a good one. A yeah. good one to just make it a little bit more growly. My uh, my third one is the Putco Clearview Top. Um, I talked about this. This is one of the things that I saw at SEMA that I was like, man, that is actually really cool. O obviously gimmicky. Like I'm going to like, just be honest, you know, it's about $2,000 and it's it, but it like, it gives you kind of like in the winter, it gives you like a pretty view, you know, like you can see out the top. Like, I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, not very, um, not very, there's no use for it other than just having more light coming in, but I think it's cool. And, uh, yeah, it's the Putco element sky view, clear lid, hard top roof. Um, and what it does is it, it, takes those two front panels, uh, on your Bronco and you pull those out and you put this in and it's totally clear and you can see up to the sky while you're in your Bronco. You know, that's kind of a throwback Ford had in the early fifties, a car called the Sunliner. Oh yeah. And the front half of the roof was glass. Yeah. And it, other than the Chrome around it, and this to me, one of my favorite Fords of all time, but yeah. I think it's, it's neat. And, uh, I would absolutely, you know, I had an extra two grand to blow. <laughs> I can buy a lot of small parts with that kind of money, yeah. but it's like, it is really cool because every time you're in the car, you're like, Oh, you know, clouds, sun, yeah. rain, you get to see it all. Well, and even people sitting in the back, you know, it doesn't feel as claustrophobic being back there. Um, it's a little bit more open. So yeah. That claustrophobic thing though, I think it's more of a two door thing. Yeah. That's the true. two door Bronco, the four door seems to be a lot more open. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more room. My, uh, my fourth mod would be the electric steps, um, the step sliders by Rock Slide Engineering. And uh, I've installed them on my truck, and they're super beefy. They look military grade. I mean, they're really awesome. And when the, the steps retract, they go completely flush, you know, and uh, there's just all you can see is the seam where they disappeared into, and they become full-on rock sliders. You know, if that's the look that you're going for, but yeah. they they are very functional. They're both steps and rock sliders. Yeah, I, I actually, I love those and they're great on the new Bronco. And I took a Bronco through Moab. Like I went to uh, <clears throat> Hell's Revenge and uh, Top of the World with this Bronco and they had the step sliders. And man, I mean... I pounded on those things pretty hard, you know, just going through obstacles and they held up great. The doors opened and the steps folded down, you know, when you needed them to. And, and it was great. Um, so I really like those. I actually went a different direction 
Uh, and I went with the Amp Power Step, um, which Tom's Off Road has both of these. We'll put links in, in the description for those. And um, what I liked about the Amp Power Step is it actually folds up under the Bronco. So you can't see anything when you're just sitting there. So I think another thing you would need is something to co cover that pinch weld um, underneath the door. Um, but yeah, the, the amp step tucks up under there really nicely. Um, so when the door is closed, you can't see anything there. So you kind of have two options there. You have the step slider for the off-road guy and then the amp power power step for someone who's just like, oh no, like I just need an extra step, I'm, but I'm not going to take this off-road and beat it up. Yeah, the cool thing about the amp steps is they disappear. Totally. Like when they're folded up, you can't tell there's a step there. And on the early Broncos, they're really sweet because they completely tuck up underneath. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. That's where I fell in love with them was on the early Bronco. Yeah. 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 So how about uh, number five for you? What do you got? So number five, I went engine uh, horsepower. So um, if if I had a Bronco today and just wanted a little more horsepower, I would do two things. I'd do a K&N intake um, and a Mishimoto intercooler. Um, and you're looking at, I mean, you're probably, uh, you know, obviously this is on paper, but it's probably 20 to 30 horsepower, um, just from those two upgrades. They're, they're really great. Um, and I think those are really great upgrades for the six gen Bronco, just kind of getting more airflow in there, getting colder air into the engine, um, and you know, getting cool, cool air in that in intercooler. Like it does make a difference, um, when you're driving around and I think you'll feel that power. So yeah, that's my, that's my upgrade. Would I be able to hear like more intake or more turbo or no? Maybe I'm not sure how much more noise it, it adds. Um, but yeah, probably with that KN, you probably hear a little bit more, but not a ton. Cause the stock stuff's really muffled. Yes. So I know yeah. when you typically do like KN products or things like that in other cars, you get to hear more of the engine, which yeah. is pretty cool. And that is the thing Ford built the motor, you know, with all the restrictions that are required. Um, and so, when you get these aftermarket parts, you're able to kind of peel back a little bit, some of those restrictions and open it up a little bit more. And so that's what you're experiencing when you get an aftermarket part. Um, you're, you're just getting a little bit more breathability and maybe not all the precise uh, restrictions that Ford is required of. Well, for my number five, Everybody knows all the stuff I put on my Bronco. I like it so much, I wouldn't even take any of it off. Yeah. Um, so I called someone and I asked this person who has done some desert racing and real rock climbing in the mountains and stuff. You get one guess. Desert racing? Yeah. Ian? Nope. Okay. That was your guess. <laughs> then his, this person's number one... Uh, uh, Bronco mod for Gen 6 was the super ship, super chip. <laughs> We're just going to have to beep that up. Did you put that T in there? <laughs> super chips, flash cal, and it lets you shut off all of the annoying features you don't like. Like the um, the worst thing is the horn for me. Oh, yeah, the double like beep. Hit the button and it horns. Burp, burp. It's so loud. So yeah. I'm trying to be sneaky here and close my door. And if the keys are in there or the keys are not in it, it just... And everyone knows you're, you've arrived. So, yeah. but um, it also lets you shut off the um, auto start and some other annoying features. So there is no button on my truck to turn that on and off. Really? Yeah. Most cars have a button on yeah. the dash yeah. somewhere. And so, yeah, that was that was his number one choice. Okay. Before we go to number two, I'll give you another hint. Okay. Uh, without giving it away, um, we've already interviewed him once. Andrew. Nope. Okay. That's it. You'll get another, you get one more chance after this. So the second, his second favorite uh, Bronco mod for Gen 6 is the metal cloak bumpers, the base model plastic bumpers, he says, offer zero protection. And um, plus, you, you know, you get the, with this, uh, the metal cloak bumpers, it puts the winch much lower and the fair lead and everything so that it doesn't block any of your cooling functions that you have. Like there's these little 
yeah. vents to open and close that Ford has all set into the front of the truck. And yeah. a lot of the bumpers block that off, which is not good for your engine. Um, Justin Barnes. Ah, you got it. <laughs> Third clue was his Bronco's yellow. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I figured you'd get it. So. I'm like sitting here racking my head. Who? And I didn't mean Andrew. I meant Todd Zerker. Andrew oh. is his uh, like co-driver or, or driver. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got it. Yeah. That's right. And his, uh, so Justin Barnes, third pick, um, saved the best for last. He said is the solo motorsports King oh. shocks, um, lift kit suspension kit. He says it is absolutely incredible. And if anybody would know, he, Justin yeah, would, knows, he would know he's run Baja full speed. Yep. So, um, he has had, uh, two other lifts already on his Bronco that he's taken off his gen six. Like, wow. who better to ask, right? Yes. So, um, and uh, he just says it's fantastic. He can't believe how fast he can rip over, you know, the bumps and the whoops and everything. And uh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they got their name. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, he's over the dunes. And you know this guy's wow. doing this. Like, he's oh, yeah. jumping his truck on the dunes. And he's got a two-door yellow Gen 6. Mm. Sorry. Cyber orange. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not yellow. Yeah. And all his trucks are about the all, same color. Yeah, they're all yellow. But he has an incredible crawler, like rock crawler, early Bronco. And yeah, and he, even his Gen 6 is super capable. He's a great driver. Like um, he took his Gen 6 up the McGrew Trail. And yeah, I mean, just, you know, went up it with all the early Broncos, you know, like it was nobody's business. So And I got to ride with him. On the oh Magoo yeah! Trail oh, in nice. his Bronco, and it was amazing. I mean, he's he's doing stuff in this Bronco that I wouldn't have tried, but I have zero experience. Yeah, and you know he has you know he has all the experience. <laughs> and then you know we were so far up the trail, and then I was offered to drive the Rebel Rally Bronco, the Roaming Wolves Bronco, and I just jumped in the truck and we went. And he's like, well, "Where is Donnie?" Like. <laughs> Did he the woods me. consume him or the rocks? <laughs> and I kind of left him at the altar. It was pretty funny. But, That's funny. Uh, that was a, a trail um, faux pas. What do you call it? Trail uh, courtesy. Yeah. Just to tell the person tell the you're person. not riding with them anymore. Yeah. But, hey, I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I got a better offer. <laughs> well, there you go. There's our must have mods for the new Bronco. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Anything on the list that you think should be on there or shouldn't be on there, let us know. But uh, there you go. Must have mods for the new Bronco. Fun episode, man. Driving driving Broncos around and uh, talking Bronco parts. Awesome. I can't wait. Uh, we're going to be doing more Gen 6 content, driving Broncos, more new parts, and uh, installing parts. And it's, it's going to be incredible. And Hopefully Ford comes out with more new stuff that we yeah, can drive. Totally.